Drive me closer. I want to hit them with my sword. Spiky bits. Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and in this video, I'm going to showcase a whole bunch of new Joy Toy figures for Warhammer 40K. Uh, these things are super fun, and everybody seems to be getting in on the action. They have so many of them now. There's a huge checklist you can download. There's a bunch of rumors about what's coming out. We've seen some uh, props or, I guess, uh, some, some work in progress of a Dread Knight, which looks to be just ridiculous. Uh, at least sized and I can't wait to see that maybe get that one but uh, I got my kind of got my heart set on the the Imperial Knight which they said is coming but you know we're still we're still waiting on that one but Joy Toy is so much fun and the the figures you know obviously compared to some of the other figures that have come out are a little bit more uh, detailed and I think you will find that you can have a lot more fun posing them and it's not quite as much work to kind of mess around with them uh, and they're kind of a higher quality than say like the McFarlane stuff that I, I think uh, kind of was a little bit of a flash in the pan, so to speak, along with the uh, the pops, which I guess we have a, a few of those behind us there that we never really saw again. But uh, we got this special uh, discount code um, from one of the uh, sites overseas, and I've ordered a bunch of stuff from them. Um, so you can actually get in stock stuff a little bit of a discount and we're going to show you some of the other websites that you can uh, purchase from and pretty much everybody's got them and if you miss the initial pre-order overseas you can lock in the stuff here in the states because there's a little bit of like an in-between you know when they come out over there and when they actually land over here and go into distribution and go to all these uh, different websites that you can buy from now this isn't a complete list you can obviously google joy toy 40k action figures find much you know, a whole bunch of different sites that sell the stuff, of course, but always try to dial in where you're, where it's actually shipping from because sometimes it's a little hard uh, to see. I, I had a little snafu. I was trying to buy a rider uh, for one of the, the figures I'm going to show you today, one of the vehicles, and I ordered it uh, from overseas and it hasn't gotten here yet. So it is what it is. I can't do nothing about it, unfortunately. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so let's jump right into it. Let's take a look at uh, a bunch of the websites that you can order from. I'll kind of give you, uh, I pretty much ordered from all of them at this point, because <laughs> sometimes I just want this stuff. And there's, uh, there's still some hope on some of the Grey Knights, which seem to be super popular and sold out overseas already. So they haven't hit America yet, the American sites. So you can jump in on those if you, if you missed out on those, because those look pretty baller. And if you think those went fast, wait till the Custodes and the Sisters hit, if I had to guess. So here is uh, the first site I wanted to show you guys. Uh, I believe it's Flyma Toy. Uh, I've ordered a bunch from them. The, the first kit I got uh, was from them, the Invader Warsuit uh, that I have in the case behind me still, which you can kind of see over my shoulder right there. Uh, that came super quick as soon as it was released. I did the pre-order and then it shipped out um, maybe like two months later or something like that. I was, I was shocked. I was like, that's crazy. Um, it was super quick shipping. It was pretty much tracked the whole way. I've gotten more stuff from them. Generally, there's a little bit of a disconnect once it hits the ocean, you know, a couple of days, but um, you can follow it all along. Now, they, they have a few codes on here that you can save with pre-order items, but uh, the in-stock stuff you don't really get a code for. Now, you can type in spiky bits, just S-P-I-K-E-Y-B-I-T-S, and you'll get 10% off if you order from them, um, it, which is really cool and will save you some money. I use it all the time. <laughs> got my own stuff um we do we do get a little bit of a kickback on it you know it's just the nature of things but i wanted to start here first because i've done the most business with them uh over the years and then there's entertainment earth which you probably heard of they've been around for like 25 years here in the states ordered all sorts of stuff from them over the years i can't even tell you how much stuff i i mean i suppose i could look it up uh they have the joy toys on here they have all sorts of stuff on here to be quite honest but like I said, if you miss the stuff over on the Asian sites, and another great Asian site too is Locker Toys. I've ordered from them. Uh, I think I got the Impulsors from them maybe, I forget. But either way, um, or the Infiltrators, uh, they, they got really great shipping, super quick, you, you discount codes and all, you know, all the things, bells and whistles that you're gonna need over there. If you miss the Asian pre-orders, jump over to Aaron Tame and Earth. Uh, they've got great customer service, never had a problem with them. Then there's Sideshow. They are always very well known for all their figures, the, the stuff they get from Hot Toys, uh, the stuff they do in-house. I have a lot of their things behind me as well and, and around the room that you can't see. I've uh, been dealing with these folks for a number of years too, never had any issues in when I, you know, uh, everything was resolved, never had any lingering issues, I guess I should say. And here's those Grey Knights that sold out pretty much everywhere. They do have a wait list open for them on Sideshow. 
And last but not least is, well, I guess eBay too, but uh, Amazon. Amazon has a ton of stuff, but you have to be careful where you're ordering from. That's that's why I ran into the little snafu and why we don't have a gunner for something I'm about to show you is because I ordered it and didn't realize that it was coming from overseas. And I was like, ah, it's not going to be here in time for the video. So, oh, well, it, it is what it is. I'll have a, I'll have a gunner here uh, soon enough. But, uh, but yeah, they got all the stuff on here and you can do pre-orders through them. I haven't pre-ordered anything through Amazon. I just usually get it if it's on Prime or um, in stock. Even if it is on Prime, I'll, I'll probably, oh, I forgot that Emperor's Champion, man. I got sweet. Ugh, I might have to pre-order him. Like, I get the Tech Marine for my, for my Dreadnought, you know? You can't, can't have a Dreadnought walk around with that Tech Marine. Like, everybody knows that. Um, they do have some of the stuff that is sold out overseas as well. So the stuff goes out of stock on pre-orders and the stuff goes out of stock in general overseas first. So the Invicta Warsuit, I uh, believe, is out of stock at both the Asian sites. And Joy Toy said when they're gone, they're gone. So I don't know if that's going to be a premium down the road. Um, if you're looking to resell or if you're looking for collectability, it may be the case. Don't really know what to tell you yet. I know the Bandai figure jumped as soon as it came out. You know, like six months later, the $100 Bandai figure was 300 bucks. So I immediately sold mine on eBay because I was like, you have no place standing behind me if you are worth that much money. <laughs> so uh, so he, so we we uh, wished him a bon voyage, but uh, I hope he's in a better place now. Either way, um, I like to play with these things, but you know, I will sell them used if they if they go up and, and they'll triple their money. I mean, I'd be silly not to at that point. So all of these action figures are gonna come with uh, various forms of assembly, I suppose you could, you could say. Uh, the smaller figures like this are gonna come already basically together and then you can just kind of pick which hands or whatever and then start posing them from there. Uh, this one looks pretty dope because he's that exclusive Primaris champion that they uh, had at Adepticon this year uh, for the first time. Once you start getting into the medium sized figures like uh, Shadow Sun here, and then I'm sure probably the Crisis Suits will be a bit bigger than her, you'll see that there's a lot more going on uh, with these. And she actually comes with uh, these flying stands, these invisible flying stands right here that you can't really see through the packaging, but we'll get her all posed up and then her head separate up there. And you can just choose uh, the different uh, arms and weapons and things. She actually has. Let's see. Yeah, so it's the uh, extra arms basically that attach to the backpack right there. So we'll have to do a little bit of assembly there along with the new flight stand. And just like we saw with the Invictor battle suit, um, that required a little bit more of assembly. But with this, it looks like all we're gonna have to do uh, for the buggy, the ATV, is put on the guns here. And then I think, Oops, I just dropped that. Oh, it's got the antenna that's gonna have to plug in the back. Very similar to the Invictor Warsuit. That's just crazy. Look how big this thing is. That's wild. That's like a foot long. Now it's time to take a closer look at them put together and well, uh, ready to go on your shelf or to play with. And what better place to start than uh, the guy I just showed you there. So I had a chance to really kind of crack out and, and have a blast with this uh, ATV and this thing is straight legit yeah it's like a foot long like just to give you an idea of scale if you haven't figured it out already from some of the promo shots that's a pain in more <laughs> hammer figures that's just it's just wild um this thing is neat i didn't realize at the time that these wheels they're just actual wheel wells in here and they don't move in tandem but that's okay it's kind of kind of cool to see um and then the front here the little bolters flip up and you can have this uh, this rail go up and down. But other than that, that's about all the motion you're gonna get out of it besides the cannon, the Gatling gun on the back here. And um, it would have been neat if the barrel spun. I mean, that's the only like kind of point of criticism I have out of all of this. And it's really hard to kind of tell, but the backpack, you're not gonna be able to put it on uh, the driver right there. I had a gunner coming in the mail, but I accidentally, like I said, <laughs> ordered it from overseas. So uh, not here in time yet, but we'll get them, to, we'll get them and we'll pull them on here and we'll have some fun. All the, fr all the wheels are free rolling and there's a really great level of detail. Like you can tell where they sponged on some weathering right there, which is really cool. And then you can have the little button. Like, don't, what's that do? Don't press the red button. And even detail on the bottom, some fades and everything and some weathering. It's just really cool, very crisp. Um, <laughs> one of my guys came into work today and I was uh, working on posing the miniatures and he was like, oh my goodness, did you did you paint those? And I was like, no, no, actually. He's like, oh, they look so good. And I was like, would you believe these are a toy? And he's like, no way. And I was like, oh yeah, bro. <laughs> so to uh, 
you know, I guess to somebody not as familiar with the hobby and stuff, uh, these look pretty professional. And like I said, for the price, I mean, I have my McFarlane figure right here. And I mean, this is the, this is a $20 McFarlane figure that, uh, I mean, you know, it's a $20 McFarlane figure, or you can spend 30 to $40 depending on where you get stuff from. And it's a little bit smaller, but pretty much detailed you know way way more detailed than things and you can definitely have a blast posing it now here's the uh outrider bike and again they did a lot of weathering on the wheels everything's free rolling here the handlebars move but i don't know if i'm going to be able to yeah okay cool i'll be able to show it to you so the handlebars move which is really neat i had a blast with that um this guy's kind of weird because he's one of the uh 1.0 joy toy figures and i'll show you kind of what that means and some things to be looking out for uh he doesn't quite fit flat on this so you kind of have to be you gotta get creative with your posing because this tail, this tailbone, and because he's not a he's not a newer uh, joy toy. Like when you push him down right here, you can kind of cover up the fact that it's only just his like butt plate that's that's kind of touching there, and it doesn't really look bad. But I just I know that he's not like 100% touching, which is whatever. I mean, it's just it, it's gonna look good on the shelf either way, and then you can try to get the the things flat on here. But what I recommend doing if you don't mind is getting the driver figure and let me see if i got the packaging here and I, so i can show you yeah i still got the packaging i always see my packaging so this assault intercessor box i believe is the yeah so this is your 1.0 figure so it's going to have a way different range of mobility and things and isn't going to in my in my opinion is doesn't work as well on the bike so what you might want to do is get this joy toy figure which is the assault intercessors it's not going to come with the bolter or the storm bolter or whatever they're called now i forget but it's going to have a lot more range of motion and double uh double ball joints at the ankle to support the weight and i'll show you that here in a minute um so he's going to fit on there a little bit better in my opinion but like i said Dude, this on a shelf still is looking fresh. It's looking great. Um, really just, I'm kind of really into action figures, so I, I really kind of crack out on all the little features and things. So it's just kind of something I noticed uh, between the two. So there's that. Um, let's keep it up with Marine. So we've got the uh, Primaris Company Champion, which technically isn't a real unit, uh, but don't tell that to him because he won't, he won't like any of that. Unfortunately, this one, you can't do the actual miniatures pose where he's holding the sword in both hands and kind of, kind of, uh, thrusting it, um, which was a little, just a little sad, I suppose, but, um, I'm, I'm not too tore up about it. He's got great, you know, this is a 2.0 figure, so it's got a great range of motion. You're going to be able to do all sorts of things with it. It's going to come. And I think I already showed you this one where you can have the bolter, the empty holster or not. Um, and just going to be able to do a lot of, a lot, a lot of cool posing and, and things like that that you really want to kind of get away with. And I'll show you that here in a second. Now the new captain model in the, uh, was it the Gravis armor, uh, is really fresh. This is a really cool kit. He can, the, the sword, uh, comes out of the scabbard and had, he's got a bunch of different hands and arms and, and different things. The problem I had with this, and I was a little disappointing, but I don't want to dis disillude anybody because, you know, it was just the way the cape was in the packaging that this this little um, clasp was uh, up above, like, it was kind of twisted in there. And what happened was is that it you can't remold this. And, and even if you put a little bit of heat on it, which I'm going to show you in here in a second, you're not going to be able to, to kind of fix that. So I have it kind of secured in place with a little bit of blue tack, which you can see right there. Um, and I think over time it'll it'll kind of work itself out um, just because of the, the softness of this material and this vinyl now I've been messing with these little points and they've gone back into play but this this guy is just fresh with the cape and everything and what I recommend doing if you get this one is you put the cape as a separate piece and you just kind of put it inside the backpack and then attach it and that will uh, go on there a lot easier but that's basically how it's supposed to supposed to look when you get on there I really like this guy and he comes with this uh, um sling mounted uh weapon uh storm bolt cannon i don't even know what they're calling them i just call them a bolter it's a bolter uh thing as well but it's just really busy when you put it on there so i haven't 
And I also purchased Shadow Sun, and Shadow Sun is really sweet. This is a very cool figure with a lot going on. Um, it's got this uh, this little um, figure holder on the back, which I definitely recommend attaching it, even if you just want to have her standing up on your desk. Because what happens is <laughs> she's kind of she's kind of back heavy with all these weapons back here, so she tends to kind of either f try to fall over or try to fall forward a little bit. And it's it, it's a delicate figure to balance, and there's always you know. And, and people so just you know do yourself a favor and just just put it on this now unfortunately it kind of plugs into the uh, well the rear area here uh, so it's a little bit of an unfortunate placing but you can do all sorts of like really cool stuff um, with you know getting her up into the air and then on the back here you can actually tighten the screw so if you if you can't get the support you need for some for a particular pose um, well, you can kind of hopefully tighten them and get and get the pose you need. And I'm not going to do a lot of posing with this this one right here. Um, I did want to mention a couple of neat features for her that you may be interested in. So the waist is very um, she she bends at the top, she bends at the the hips there. So you can get a lot of range with this model, and that's good because so she can pull out her little uh, pulse sidearm, <laughs> which is just wild. And then this will actually fit into her uh her hand right there she's got an alternate head i don't think i showed you the unboxing of this but she, her hair just kind of goes uh everywhere um which is really cool but i didn't i just wanted to use the the normal um helmeted version uh for this right here now i did want to show you something on these so these weapon um mount arms you got to be a little careful with these because they're a little bit thin plastic and i'm not i'm not like super worried about it but if you're not careful, you know, the joints are very tight. Um, so I hate to see it kind of break off. But, um, you know, I don't feel like it's, it's just something to be aware of, you know. And that's why they put it on here. It's for 15-year-olds and stuff. This, these aren't toys for kids, obviously. Um, but, you know, it's just something to be kind of be aware of. In, especially if it's falling backwards and falling over. You know, I could see where uh, stress over time would really uh, kind of mess these up. And this one actually kind of slid out a little bit. So just kind of be aware of what's going on with these these weapon mounts right here. Because they're not necessarily the, the, the strongest looking thing. Um, like right here, you can see she's just going to kind of fall over. So I don't really want... To. Her to do that because all of this stuff moves like all of the thrusters and all of the the all the little vents and, and things on the back here all of this moves and it's just very dynamic uh, very very cool figure to kind of mess around with you can really crack out to the poses and things with her especially when she gets her um, crisis suit guys to go with her and I think you know, hopefully you get that there it is um, get her locked in and kind of set her down because I could see where she is going to have uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to kind of mess around with her when the rest of the models uh, come out the fire warriors are out but the crisis suits and things are on the way now let's talk about um, the features between the two types of figures and also uh, a couple other things with the joints so you probably will on occasion you know want to change up the posing of your miniature um or your action figures rather and it, it, it totally makes sense these particular ones these new 2.0 joints are very tight that's one of the biggest uh differences between these and the old ones the the hands right here i mean my thumbs and my fingers are so sore from trying to pose these they i have just oh it's just so brutal the 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 plastic is very tough so they'll, they'll hold you know the the weapons and everything quite firm so what you got to do in a lot of times is just kind of maybe work the weapon itself you know into around like something like this and try to kind of work it in like that now alternatively if you are unsuccessful which i probably will be no i wasn't okay cool because really getting those fingers and things out of the way it's it's really tough it's very tough but it'll hold like this thing isn't coming out and you can do all sorts of you know cool poses and it's you know it's still going to be in there which is really neat if you if you have to use some heat and i had to use some heat uh here to put the scabbard onto this little peg right here it was very difficult to get in there so what i did was i applied a little bit of heat uh to 
And you can just use a blow dryer or you can submerge it in hot water. I use the heat gun on low and I just, you know, going back and forth very quickly so that you don't actually burn the miniature. <laughs> Do not burn your miniatures, guys. Um, you can kind of accomplish that. Now, conversely too, if you want to pull out these joints here and you have a hard time reattaching it because the big ball joints are going to go outwards and the little ball joints are the innies right there. Um, if you have a hard time getting the, the whatever it is, the thing back on the joint, now that I've, I've worked that a little bit. So once you work them, you're usually good. You can apply a little bit of heat into here from with your heat gun from pretty far away. Just move it really quick. Um, and that way it'll, it'll kind of make it a little, um, you know, looser and you can get it on there and then just run some cold water over it or just let it air dry and you'll be good to go. Some other features that are different um, between the 1.0 figures and the 2.0 figures is the body style, believe it or not. So you can kind of see it here on this guy and this guy here, like the chests are a little bit different. Like the chests are kind of wider. These are a little bit tighter and a little bit more uh, sort of detailed, I guess. And one of the things that I'm, I guess, I guess I could show you on this. Let's see, this should flatten. Yeah, so this, is going to stretch out before it pops. So the feature on this to do gun poses and things was that it would it would kind of come out at like 45 from the shoulder. Those are 1.0 figures. And now the 2.0 figures are kind of uh, doing a, like a double butter, butterfly joint because you can see right in there, that is not the same, right? So what this is gonna do is it's not gonna come out at like a clean 45 or even longer, like I could have pulled that out longer, that, that bike guy. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna allow you to kind of come in tighter across the chest and do and do like some cool sword poses and things, whereas you're not gonna be able to do that with your uh, 1.0 poses. Um, so just kind of something to keep in mind there. So. Um, that's something to consider. Now down here at the, the ankles, these actually feature a double ball joint. So you can see in there where there's two ball joints, just like I showed you with the hand here. You got the big, the big joint is the outer and the little joint or the little ball is the inner. The same down here pretty much for the most part. So you can kind of get an idea of that. And what that's going to do is allow you to kind of pose it a little better and also give you a little bit tighter tolerance to where you can just kind of lock those guys in. Now over here on these guys and why this doesn't kind of sit as flat as I would like it is because this is just a single ball joint. So it's just sticking down and there's a single ball joint in here. So it's not gonna give you quite, the, the motion is coming from here only. So the pivot is here where you're not getting a pivot so I can't get down further um, to kind of flatten this this foot out here. But like I said, it's it's just little noticeable stuff that really isn't gonna matter when this is on your shelf. No, not at all. Uh, but it's stuff that the designers have noticed and have already fixed, which, you know, kind of, um, you know, talks to their commitment level to their, to, their, to their process and their designs and what, you know, kind of separates them, well, from shit like this. <laughs> No, this is great. If we didn't have Joy Toys, I'd be like, oh my God, the McFarlane figures. But we do have Joy Toys and I'm like, mm, McFarlane figures aren't that tight anymore. Uh, so it is what it is. So those are the major um, differences with the between the, the old figures or the 1.0 figures and the new 2.0 figures. And I couldn't tell you which ones are which, you know, in, in the lineup because I haven't bought a whole lot of them. Just these guys and the, the stuff from earlier. I got a bunch on pre-order. But I would say from here on out, uh, every one of them is gonna be uh, two, uh, the 2.0s. Now something else to remember, again, if you're having problems with these ball joints and you pull something out and you just can't for the life of you get it reattached, right? Even if you, um, or you can't remove it, right? So say you can't get this out of here, like you're like, man, I really need to get this out of here. Or say it just comes out on accident, right? And you need to reattach it. One of the things you can do is grab some needle nose pliers and you don't wanna just grab, mangle your miniature with these steel pliers. You wanna grab a paper towel and you know fold it a couple times. And then what you can do is put it over the ball joint, kind of like that and then use it. So you're not jacking the, uh, you're not shredding the, the, the paint, you're not indenting into the plastic or anything like that. I've had to do that a couple of times uh, for a couple of the different things that I just popped out and didn't notice and then I couldn't reattach them because I started losing feeling in my thumbs <laughs> posing all these guys. 
<laughs> it's, I sound like a wuss, but it's a really hard plastic and it's very sturdy and I really enjoy it. The, the posability and things you're going to get, but it will, you know, if you mess with these guys for, you know, I don't know, a couple hours straight, I guess at this point, um, it will, it will wear on you. So just be aware. These are some of the tips and tricks and some of the features to the, the newer figures to kind of look out for. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching our unboxing and kind of, uh, I guess, uh, educational <laughs> uh, somewhat video, I hope, about the differences between the older Joy Toys from a year ago and the, the newer 2.0s as they're, as they're being called uh, now. If I, you know, if I forgot anything, you know, leave it in the comments below and, and we'll try to get to it for sure. But I just really enjoy these figures. They're just uh, really, really cool. And I hope that uh, I hope that they put out some ones that you resonate with you and you can pick them up and have them on your desk and play around with them, you know, and I hope that they <laughs> spark that joy uh, in you as well. Um, make sure to check out some of the retailers that are selling these. Of course, you can you can get them for less the in stock ones over on Flymia. But you know, check out Entertainment Earth, um, uh, Sideshow, Amazon, eBay. We'll have links to all of them up there. I think uh, Big Bad Toy Store has them here in the states too. I don't really do a lot of business with them, so I couldn't tell you how good they are or not. But some people have mentioned that in the past as well. If you liked that video feature, consider supporting us over at patreon.com and get back in the mail each month a miniature crate full of some of the stuff we review here as well as some of the top 3D artist designs out there too to help support what they're doing. Plus, discount coupon codes from some of those same manufacturers. They're yours to keep whether you cancel or stay on. Just It's totally up to you. Obviously, we want to keep you as happy as possible. So check it out over at patreon.com forward slash spikybits.